Um, I guess I'm most proud of the film and the accomplishments of everybody who worked on it because what is so fun to me, and I don't know if I'll ever get this experience to do again, was that it was actually such a pure process for me from the comic to the short film to the feature. Excellent. Hi, this is Sarah Foster. Michael Clark Duncan. Hey, this is Jeff Stoltz here. Hi, I'm Holland Taylor. I'm Megan Good. Hey, I'm Jordana Brewster. Stephanie Oki. My name is Andrea Sperwin. I'm Jessica Coffin. My name is Angela Robinson, and I'm the director. Let's try that. And cut. I play the role of Mr. Phipps. Dominique. Bobby. Max. Amy Bradshaw. Ninochka. <laughs> Janet. And I play Janet in short film. I'm here on the set of Debs. 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 And cut. Got it. <laughs> that was good. I came up with the basic premise of Debs. I wrote a comic book a couple of years ago, and I just where the characters kind of arrived from. Angela Robinson has been working on this idea since college. I mean, she actually has comic books that she drew in college. They were just something I do for fun and just to kind of relax, but I never related them to my writing at all. I just like try really hard to write a screenplay like the way you were supposed to and read all the books and everything. And then for fun, I would go and draw these little comic books for my friends. And then uh, there was a time where she was gonna have it be on the internet as like a series on the internet. And that didn't end up happening, luckily. A little voice told me, get out, basically, because I had cold feet. And I was like, if you sign away the rights to the property, you're not going to be able to sell it in any other ways without having a lot of attachments. And then Angela won a grant from this organization called Power Up to make a short film. So I wrote kind of a 10-minute version of it. And then that was produced last summer for uh, very cheap. Right, and action. Uh, we had four days to shoot and twenty thousand dollars, and we were shooting on HD. And those were the rubric, and you couldn't go over, and you couldn't spend any more money than that. People for the short were, you know, Angela's friends. She got to work for them, so it's just a different attitude. You made a lot of stuff work that, in your mind, you're going, I don't know if this is going to work, and it worked. That's what's kind of inspiring about it. And it got, you know, it worked so well. It got made into a feature. It went to all these festivals, and it's really fun to see that happen and to, to be a part of the short. Once we finished editing it, then Power Up has this big gala thing they do each year. I mean, it's great because they do all this stuff for you. They produce the movie and they present it to the public. And it screened really well and the crowd was really uh, responsive and enthusiastic. And then everything started to happen very quickly. We got into Sundance. The short film was going there. After Angela wrote and directed the short, she was like so inspired and so psyched that she wrote the feature script. like in a minute, like just so fast, it just flowed. And then I also had a meeting with um, Clint Culpepper at Screen Gems who loved the short. Everybody's talking about it. He was like, I can green light this right now at $2 million, but if you leave, the offer's off the table. You're Lucy Diamond. You're a Deb. And so that is what is now feature film Debs. Casting was interesting because I was trying to have each girl be really unique and distinct. They needed to be sexy and funny and interesting, and they also needed to look different because what I found is actually it was so strange is that when you just start interviewing and auditioning a ton of girls who were in LA, everybody started to blend together and just really look the same. For Amy and Lucy, I was really trying to find a couple, like two people who you'd believably imagine could be together. I am really glad I met you. I'm really glad I met you too. Amy is nothing like me. Jordan and I joke because I'm a little bit more like Lucy. It's like Sarah's very confident and very direct. Very outgoing and very sure of herself. And I'm very like sort of shy and insecure. So it's like we're playing polar opposites. We're playing each other. So really she should be Lucy and I should be Amy. I don't think you should be judging me. I'm not judging you. I'm not the one that got picked out of a gajillion people to be Miss Super Duper Crime Fight and Goody Two Shoes. But they really are like each character that they play. Devin can be a little esoteric sometimes. I never really liked you, but I'm sad to see you go. I am a French girl. I, uh, 
I wear very short skirts and uh, I carry around a great big gun. <laughs> I don't know how much of a goody two-shoes Jill is. Please don't smoke. But just definitely together the way that Janet is. I have gotten these types of characters before, and so I think maybe there's a certain um, innocence that I, as Jill, project. But in reality, you know, I would never dress like this. I have the sweater she's wearing, but in taupe. Really? Where did you get it? Target. I guess there's similarity, you know. I guess I like to think there isn't, but <laughs> there probably is. You! I don't even want to look at you. You can forget about that recommendation. And Megan is really disciplined in her life and can be kind of hardcore sometimes. If you're gonna do the job, do the job right. She's not scared of anything. She's always a go-getter. She's always barking orders. Amen! The one thing that me and Max have in common is that Max is always like the leader of the pack. Yes, that's why it's fun to play her. Janet, five minutes. Have you seen my gun? There are very few roles that happen a lot where young actresses really get a chance to do comedy and to do action and to have flair and have complexity. People in Hollywood have a hard time seeing a girl that is cute who can be side-splittingly funny. And they either want you to be hot or they want you to be side-splittingly funny. I want to be dancer. And if you're skinny with blonde hair, then you're you're a sex pot, bimbo, or you're the girl next door. And that's not me. To have like the women be the main protagonists, and to have the men being the background and being like the beefcakes essentially, that to me was like very, very fulfilling. And I and I wish that happened more in movies these days. The girls are great. We're here till four or five in the morning, and they're still chipper. They still look beautiful. I've actually been impressed by their attitudes. I mean, they could really turn it into a, a big diva thing and be pissed off at four in the morning, but they've been great. We're all tired and a little bit cranky, and the hours are crazy, but we have each other to lean on, and so we all get along. And what did I say to you the very first day of Academy? That's my bunk, bitch. Okay, after I said that, Debs stick together. I feel like I really made friends on this set, friendships that are going to last past the movie. I was saying I think that it's been more like being a camp counselor than being a director. <laughs> Angela is like a zen fountain. Her knowledge of film is mind-boggling and so extensive that even in reading the script, you can tell that this is a person who knows film and film history backward and forward. Okay. Even bigger, and don't look back at it. Stylistically, it's very delicate in something like this. This is not just a ha-ha comedy, it's a satirical. So you have to sort of play some things for real and some things very lightly. Now, Alice. Amy. Amy. We are going to need a description of the encounter. The encounter? She's very good at keeping her ear right and what she wrote and what she wanted no matter how small or seemingly irrelevant. She's very good, she's very educated, she's pretty quick and uh, very knowledgeable. In so many ways, you wouldn't even think she's a first time feature director. And she's taken on the responsibilities of not only writing the screenplay, she's directing and she's editing. So she's as involved as you could possibly be in a project, which is great because sometimes when you have different elements, pieces, little pieces, get lost along the way. You have to work under a certain restraints, but you also can't compromise because you have to ultimately get what's in your head onto the screen. So that's the hardest part, is making sure the costumes and the production design and the actors and the hair and makeup and everything works together in one cohesive whole. And if you could do that, then that's directing. We had to do a lot of stunt coordinating, so we had to learn like a lot of um, sequences where we had to beat up guys that are much bigger than us. We have like Devin hitting a big burly stunt guy and like touching him on the cheek and he goes, you know, and he's like rolling all over the place and I just think it's so funny. Of course the safety precautions and the people they had working with us uh, to teach us how to actually how to fire were, you know, are the best. You have professionals. You safe? Let's get this job done. Yeah, we went to the range. That was a lot of fun to learn how to shoot a gun and to learn how to do it convincingly so you look like you're a professional. 
The craziest thing was not blinking. It knocks you back so far, and I had to not blink, look sexy, and look unafraid, when secretly inside, I was crapping my pants. I was crapping my pants. We had an incredibly good time, but there's never enough time to shoot everything you wanted. We were basically going in on a 28-day schedule to try to accomplish what most movies do in 70 days. The biggest challenge really has been stretching the budget to be able to accommodate the scope of the film because we really want to achieve the kind of action feel for the movie. I really wanted it to have an indie sensibility, and so I'm most proud of being able to kind of make it through a system, do you know what I mean, of trying to get a movie made and out, which is so, such an incredible miracle to have anything happen and to be so proud of the work that we did and the ultimate product. But also, it's an eye-opener. You can't decide matters of the heart. It is madness to try. I think it's a film about, for Amy, realizing kind of who she is and what she is and what makes her happy and what she wants. But the story just happens to be about two girls who find their true sexuality. And I think it's really groundbreaking. I mean, I think right now people are open to new things. I'm open to love, I am. It's not a big, big deal within the story. It's just treated so casually that I think that's kind of a nice thing. And my goal was to have people have such a good time watching it that they didn't even realize that this message and kind of politics was kind of coming into their consciousness. It's, it's going to break down some walls, and the devs are going to be right there with their guns firing at those walls.